So I actually ended up recording this particular video right after my first weekend, but I wasn't really thrilled about the way it turned out. It was way too in depth. It would kind of get boring in my opinion. So I wanted to reshoot it, just outline quickly exactly what happened the weekend not go into much detail. So if that's something that interests you, enjoy the video. And if you are new, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, turn on post notifications. And with that said, we're gonna roll the intro real quick and then we'll jump right into the first weekend. The first weekend was back February 28th, 29th and March 1st. So it was a three day weekend. It started on Friday. The first time was at 2 p.m. and it lasted until about seven. Saturday was eight till about 7 p.m. And then Sunday was eight till 3 p.m. So on Friday, it was kind of an energizer and that's what they call it, where we introduced ourselves as coaches. We did a little role playing. They introduced their first PowerPoint, which was kind of the outline of the structure of the course, what to expect in terms of the developmental period, what to expect in terms of the second weekend what their expectations are of us coaches and what we can expect from them as instructors. After that, we move to the field. So usually what happens is you won't have actual youth players. So the coaches will end up having to play. This happened in my 11 v 11 versus 9 v 9 license as well. So I wasn't really surprised. And they also kind of told us beforehand. So on Friday, we went out there and played. They kind of gave us a 3D roadmap. So when we were the player had us playing uh, the play practice play. So we had a small warm up, and then a, a small activity that expanded on the warm up, and then we expanded from the, the core activity to like a bigger field session. Throughout our playing, one of the instructors who was running the field session would stop us, basically coach us. And so we would observe what it's like on the field just so we can get an idea. So we're not clueless about what they expect in terms of coaching. On Saturday, we actually did have field players, which was nice. Their ages were from girls 2001 all the way to 2005. On Saturday, we developed our first play practice play session. They didn't really focus on the, the phase one or phase three. It was really the, the middle one. That's the core activity. Activity. So we were divided up into groups and then from there we had to watch a video that was provided by the US Federation and they either assigned you attacking or defending for the blue or red team and you had to watch specific parts and see how you could help them achieve better results or if they were already good what could they work on to make them even better. So our first activity was uh, we were blue attacking I believe so our problem was they the kids were too clumped up in the middle and they weren't really converting their chances. So very straightforward and simple. Once we developed our core activity, we moved to the field and that's where we were introduced to the girls who were practicing. Initially, they wanted eight to 12 coaches coach those girls and see how you are as a coach. I think we only made it through six because it was really hot. Each coach was given about 10 minutes and the girls had very little water break. I don't really understand that, but by the time I got to them, it had already been about a good 50 minutes of different coaches, different activities, different intensity levels. So I think I was the last one to go and that was six, uh, six candidates. And that was our morning until about one or two, I believe. And then the rest of the day, we were back in the classroom and it was very dense in terms of the PowerPoints. So we come to find out that the Federation actually changed their D license and they put a lot more content in there. The instructors don't know why. Uh, and it actually removed some of the group activities where you can learn from other coaches and what worked for them and what didn't. But now the instructors have to go through these PowerPoints. So it was kind of, you pick your battles in a sense. And for us, um, I think a lot of coaches there really wanted to learn from other coaches because they were all kind of coaching the same age group or they were all similar experience level. So it was really trying to learn from other coaches, networking in a sense. Hopefully the second weekend we'll get that. On Sunday, which was the last day, we started at 8 a.m. again. This day we didn't have girls, so the coaches were the players again, like on Friday. And what we had to do was, again, we watched this short video. You were either assigned attacking or defending for blue or red, and you had to develop another core activity. We were blue attacking on Friday, so I think we were like red defending on Sunday. And again, you have to develop a core activity and then you take that to the field. And then just who did not coach on Friday or Saturday, they had to coach on Sunday morning and us coaches were the players. So I think we went through like the remaining like six or seven coaches or however many were left. Different activities, different intensity levels. After that, um, 
that was kind of the end of the day. We wrapped up kind of an overview and they kind of talked a little bit about what the developmental period was gonna be like, who your mentor was, your coach, kind of sent us on our way. So my biggest positives of the first weekend were definitely the hands-on experience that we got. I liked my mentor. He was a little older, but he was straight to the point. He didn't kind of sugarcoat anything. So when I coached on Saturday, he was very, very harsh, at least in my opinion. And I'll have a little segue uh, about my opinion on that moment because it was a moment of complete and total breakdown, for, at least for me personally. So we're gonna jump to that real quick. So, pause, mental breakdown. This is the self-reflection that I wrote after my coaching session. So there were six candidates selected to coach the group of girls that came and two people from each group were gonna go. So each group developed their own session plan according to, and they had to go out to the field and implement that. And each coach went out there for about 10 minutes, watched, all the other candidates observed, we took notes, and then at the end, the coach came back and the head instructors critiqued them. And then the your own group kind of gave you suggestions about what you did right, what you did wrong. And then it was the next uh, candidate's turn. When I went, our core activity was switching the point of attack. I was really looking for specific things from them to do because they were already tired and that was really going on the left side, switching to the right side, shooting. I don't know, I didn't think I did a good job because I didn't know them. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but for me it was really uncomfortable telling someone that I didn't know, you know, giving them critical advice about playing because I don't know them. You know, I don't know what their strengths are. I don't know what their weaknesses are. I don't know how good they are technically. So for me, it felt very uncomfortable doing that. But now, <laughs> I guess the good thing is when I finished, I don't really remember all the criticism that I got from uh, my mentor and instructor, but it really put me in a low place because I didn't, I didn't know how to respond. And I felt very not uncomfortable, but I felt, felt very bad because I didn't know if I could do it. I didn't know if coaching was for me because of my performance. And I wrote this down because I really needed to express everything that I was feeling at that moment because it was kind of, it was unsettling in front of all of those candidates, you know, so, it was a big circle and instructor me all candidates were looking at me whenever you know he asked a question and i had to respond kind of put you on the spot which is fine because it makes you think think critically about you know the environment the practice session you have to think about their perspective the instructor's perspective your own perspective your own coaching methodology so you know it, it was uncomfortable because everyone was staring at me and i was being crit criticized but at the same time you know I felt like quitting because, I know that's so stupid, but I felt like quitting because I didn't know, it was, it was too much, I'll put it that way. It was too much at that time and it was too critical, at least, you know, because you had just performed, it was too critical, right? If you're observing other coaches and they're being, getting their ass chewed out, you know, you're sitting there thinking, man, I'm gonna do a better job, but then when you go out there and you do it and you think you did a good job or you think you did a bad job, but then you get criticized, that's when it's like, you know, too much. So, um, and that was my total, total breakdown. Uh, it was kind of harsh, but uh, it was a moment of growth for me. So I'm, I was really excited about that. We did get to talk to a little of the coaches and learn what works for them, what doesn't work for them. I wish we could have done more, but I understand that those instructors have their own timeline that they have to keep because they're part of the federation they're teaching a course from the federation so it's kind of has to line up with how the federation would do it if you were doing it anywhere else they kind of want to keep everyone on the same boat so the course what they give you is they give you this resource packet right here and in here is kind of the revised D license because they're putting a big emphasis on the grassroots area. More emphasis on the six tasks of coaches. They've put more emphasis on the player qualities and key attributes. They've really done a good job, I think, in providing you 
more material than you could possibly handle. So that's good because I think if you're entering the grassroots world, having as much information as possible is the best way to do it. I'm actually a pretty big fan of this because they do this right here, which is kind of an overview of play practice play. And that was the big talking point this weekend was the play practice play methodology. Now something to keep in mind that they told us that the D license and a little bit of the C license is all about play practice play. That's the grassroots methodology that the US Federation is trying to make the foundation. So everything is the same. We're all understanding the same methodology. If you get to the C license, the B license, the A license and the pro license, they're all very, very different, okay? Something that the instructor said was that the methodology is a methodology. That's it. You're supposed to take this, whatever works for you for your own teams, you're supposed to take the information and the resources in here and add it on to your own philosophy and your own style because there's no good in just producing robot coaches. You know, that doesn't do the Federation any good, that doesn't do US soccer, that doesn't do growth in our country any good. But I think that's great that they're just laying this foundation to where you can grow on that and add your own little bits and pieces here and there and make it your own style. So that's the uh, that was the first weekend. I was super excited about getting started because I really wanted to meet more coaches. I really wanted to grow my network and above all, I went into that license with the biggest open mind that I could have because I never assumed and I never wanted to assume that I knew more than any coaches there, any instructors. I always went in there trying to absorb anything that I could because I want to grow as a coach and I want my next step to challenge me. And that's why this is such a fantastic packet because it's got little bits and pieces of everything. So like, the, for example, the key qualities, qualities, for example, of, of things that you can look for in a player that you, at certain developmental phases, that's what they should be expressing. And that doesn't just, you know, it comes naturally, you'll kind of get an understanding, but seeing it physically written down gives you a better idea of how to phrase it, how they're wording it, what are some soccer terminology words of how to phrase it. So I think that's good to expand your vocabulary and the way you talk when it comes to coaching kids or your practice sessions, and, and that'll change once you get this. But I think that's, I think that's a very good resource. So. That's the end of the video. It was very short. Like I said, I recorded this last time and it was just so dense and there was so much information because I was trying to be as detailed as possible and it would have been like a 30 to 40 minute video. So I just wanted to recap real quick. I'll make videos throughout the developmental period so you guys get a better understanding of what is the six to eight week period like before you go to the second weekend. So be on the lookout for that. And as every other YouTuber says, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to turn on post notifications. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. The weekend is almost here. If you're coaching, I hope you guys win your games and I hope you grow as a coach, connect with some coaches, learn as much as you can, and above all, make sure your kids are having fun. That's the most important aspect when it comes to this sport.